The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to start using Arduino microcontrollers in your projects. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, I'd like to tell you my New Year's resolution, and it is to finish a pinball machine. I actually haven't finished one since March 2010 when I did Bill Paxton Pinball, so it's been almost three years. So my resolution, I'm going to get Ghost Squad done in time for the March Midwest Gaming Classic. Period. The name Arduino describes a microcontroller development system. Let's go over the parts of the most common model, the Arduino Uno. This device can be powered by the USB port or the DC power jack. The USB port also does the serial programming and communication from your computer. Arduino is based off Atmel AVR microcontrollers. The Uno actually contains two microcontrollers. The smaller one on the left performs a USB to serial conversion. Other devices often use an FTDI chip for this function. On the right is the heart of the Arduino, an ATmega328 microcontroller. This is the through-hole version. Some versions have surface mount. The pins of this chip are brought out to the headers, allowing you to connect whatever you want. This is the Arduino Integrated Development Environment, or IDE for short. This program is not actually installed. Instead, you just download the Arduino folder, put it wherever you want, and run it from there. If you get a new piece of hardware, like a motion sensor, and want to include its libraries to help your code, just put them in the Libraries folder. This IDE plus a physical board makes up the Arduino system. A breadboard with jumper leads is also very useful when prototyping. Now let's discuss some basic things you can do with an Arduino. We will cover outputs, such as an LED, inputs, such as a switch, PWM, or pulse width modulation, and analog input, such as a gaming joystick. Let's start with outputs. Click on Files Example Blink to load up a basic sketch. We will use this for all of our examples. The Blink example says Pin Mode 13 Output. Pin Mode 13 is the built-in LED on the Arduino board. Let's change this to pin mode 7, 1. 1 means the same thing as output. For most functions, you need to declare what you want the pin to do before you can do it. Now in loop, change both of the 13s to 7, change high to 1, and low to 0. Digital right changes the pin state, but remember you must declare the pin's mode first. On the Arduino, connect a positive long lead of an LED to pin 7, the other lead of the LED to a resistor, under 1K ohm is best, and the other end of that to ground. On the ITE, go to Tools, Serial Port, and the Arduino will usually be the highest or most recent port listed. Select it, then click the forward arrow or push Ctrl U to upload. The light is now blinking. You've taken your first step. Now let's do an input, in this case, a button. Under Setup, add Pin Mode 6, 0, making Pin 6 an input. You could also type Input instead of 0. Before we continue, let's add the switch. To give the switch a constant, known state, we connect it to positive voltage through a 10K resistor, and then connect this to our pin 6 input. This is called a pull-up resistor. Thus, when the switch isn't being pressed, we'll read a 1, positive voltage. The other side of the switch we connect to ground, meaning that when you press it, we'll read a 0. This could also be reversed by having the resistor and the default state go to ground, and the button pressed state be 1. That would be called a pull-down resistor. Guess what's just as cool as the mod we're making now? The new builds you can make using the new 512 megabyte Raspberry Pi. That's twice the memory of the first model, but at the same great price. And what goes well with Raspberry Pi? I'd like to order two Raspberry Pis, please. Oh, you have the 512 megabyte flavor? Uh, give me that, yes. Also, I would like one Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 7 inch tablet. Win one today for showing Element 14 what you can do with your new and improved Pi. Compete in the Element 14 community's Double the Memory Pi Challenge. It's a cool blogging competition for everyone who loves a slice of Raspberry Pi. Joining the challenge is easy. Just go to element14.com forward slash Pi Challenge. Show them what you can do with twice the memory in a 300 word or more blog. The Element 14 community team will choose the top five projects and the creator of the winning project will win the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 7 inch tablet. 
The remaining four projects will be showcased in the community with full bragging rights. The Double the Memory Pie Challenge is just another way that Element 14 makes it easy for engineers to be inspired to find the solutions and products they need to get the job done. Good luck with the contest and happy building. And now, back to the show. Back to the program. Under loop, let's add if digital read 6, our switch pin number, equals 0, meaning it's pressed, then digital write 7 1. Turn on the LED. Else, that is, if it doesn't equal 0, digital write 7 0, turning off the LED. We can also delete the delay functions. Control U to upload the sketch, and voila, you are now controlling the LED via logic. Now let's do PWM, pulse width modulation. Things like a dimming LED or a variable speed motor aren't controlled by changing the voltage, but rather the frequency, and this is done with PWM. In our sketch, we'll change pin 7 to 5. This is because only certain pins on the Arduino are PWM capable, indicated by the swirly lines on the PCB. So we're going to use number 5 and leave our switch on number 6. In our if statement, we'll change it so if the button is pressed, we do an analog write of 255 to pin 5. This is full speed since the range is 0 to 255, an 8-bit value. For the else, that is no button pressed, we'll make it an analog write 564, one quarter of the speed, but still on. Upload this to the Arduino, then move the LED to pin 5. Its default will be dim because of the PWM of 64. Press the button and it will receive faster pulses, thus be brighter. Remember, it's actually flickering very rapidly, just faster than your eye or this camera can see. Now let's try a motor. The pins can't power one directly, so we'll hook pin 5 up to a transistor which will act as a switch for our higher current motor. In this case, the lower speed of 64 causes the motor to move slowly, while pressing the button and giving it 255 is full speed. Our final example will be analog in. The Uno has six channels for this, which can be used for normal I.O. as well. In our code, we're going to add serial begin and the baud rate to setup. This allows our program to monitor the progress. Next, above setup, we add an integer variable called pot capital V and set it to zero. Capitalization does matter, so keep track of it. In loop, we add pot V equals analog read A0, the first analog digital converter. This is a 10-bit ADC, meaning we'll get a value from 0 to 1023. Next, we add serial print line pot V, which will send the result back to our PC. Upload the sketch to the Uno and then click here to open the serial monitor. Make sure you set the baud rate to match your program. Let's attach one axis of an analog stick to the Uno. The center of the potentiometer, called the wiper, goes to the A0 connection we're monitoring. The other two pins go to ground and positive voltage. By moving the stick back and forth, we're moving the wiper closer to either ground or positive voltage. This makes the value of pot V either closer to zero or closer to 1023, depending on whether it's closer to ground or positive voltage. Center, or not press, will be around 2.5 volts or 511. In this tutorial, we covered the basic things you can do with an Arduino. You've seen me use them in projects before because they're cheap, easy to use, and quite powerful. Now that you have the skills, let's see what you come up with. My rave today is about great new problem-solving ideas. I love getting suggestions via email and show comments with things I would have never thought of before, such as my single-handed controller mod. No person should work in a vacuum, so it's always great when I get outside input. However, my rant today involves projects that aren't really worth my time, like trying to revive a laptop LCD when you could just buy a new one for 50 bucks. Another example is that double-decker printer I built a few episodes ago. It's cool and all, but the time it took me to build it probably exceeded the time it would save me by printing two objects at once. So it's important that when you start a project, you think about, is the time it takes to build it going to be worth the value of it when it's done? It's not always going to be worth it. Today's question comes from the extremely hot and cold fan who asks, I'm looking for a variable resistor, but I need it to be able to handle at least 10 amps at 12 volts DC. I want to control a Peltier plate and adjust how hot or cold it is. I would suggest looking into the temperature control circuit of a 3D printer. It's widely available. They use something called a MOSFET along with a temperature probe to control high voltage heaters. Basically, it's switched on and off very rapidly to maintain a temperature. The same method will work with your Peltier cooler. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be modding a MIDI controller into a guitar. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS, where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.